Today, we will test the sharpness of two 35mm prime lenses. They are fast. Both of them have an f1.4 aperture. At the ending of this clip, we will find out which one wins. Let me show you the lenses. The first one is the Canon EF 35mm f1.4 USM-L. This is the first version. It was released back in 1998. It has the EF letters in the full name, so of course it can work on both full frame and APS-C sensor cameras. The second one is the Sigma 35mm f1.4 DG HSM Art, a more recent lens released in 2012. Same as the Canon one, it works on both full frame and crop sensor cameras. Does that year difference matter? 1998 when the Canon was released versus 2012 when the Sigma hit the market. We will find out. There will be four rounds. Sharpness in the middle of the image, sharpness in the corners, in close-ups and diffraction. Let's see which lens is better. The first round starts now. Sharpness in the middle. It's better to watch this video in full screen mode to better see the differences. Above, we have the lenses tested on a full frame camera and below on an APS-C sensor camera. Here we are at f1.4. The Sigma lens seems a bit sharper at its widest aperture and we can notice that on both cameras. The Canon lens is doing okay on full frame but not on APS-C. Let's now close the aperture to f1.6 where both lenses improved. On full frame, there is no more ghosting on the Canon lens and the Sigma lens looks great. On APS-C, in the left side, we see sharpness, but a lot of ghosting. On the right side, it looks better. Closing to f1.8 and on full frame, finally, the Canon is as sharp as the Sigma. On APS-C, ghosting is still visible on the left side, but the right side looks decent. At f2.2, we have similar performances on full frame. Below, we have good sharpness on the Sigma lens, but the Canon lens is still struggling. Stopping to f2.8, we will now focus only on the Canon lens on APS-C, because all the other images have the same sharpness. We see just a small improvement, ghosting still visible. We'll have to go all the way to f5.6 to see a good performance in the bottom left side. Overall, both lenses have good performances, especially on full frame cameras, but the right side proved to be better. The Sigma lens won the first round. It gets sharper faster in the middle of the image. Let's now see who wins the second round. Sharpness in the corners. At f1.4, on both lenses, we don't see a good performance, but the right side looks a bit better. Stopping to f1.8 and we only have significant improvements on full frame. Again, the Sigma seems to be better. At f2.2, indeed, the Sigma lens looks slightly sharper on full frame, but we still don't see good results. On APS-C, the situation is worse and there are no differences. Closing to f2.8 and we have good sharpness on full frame and decent sharpness on APS-C. The two lenses are head to head now. At f3.5, we get improvements, but no significant differences. Closing to f4.5. Here, the Sigma lens is just a bit sharper on both cameras. At f5.6, the only image that doesn't look good is the Canon lens on APS-C. Sigma's APS-C is not as sharp as what we see above, but it's good. Closing to f8 and in the bottom left side, the Canon lens never quite gets as sharp as what we see on the right. Again, the Sigma lens wins. It is sharper in the corner of the image. We will now move to close-up image quality. I will take a photo at the minimum focusing distance for both lenses. The third round starts now. At f1.4, we see some ghosting, but the right side looks a bit better. Closing to f1.6, we see improvements, but both lenses have the same result. At f2, great performances. It seems that the image coming from the Canon lens is just a bit more punchy. At f2.8, again, great sharpness, but the left side looks a bit better. This result remains the same if we gradually close the aperture all the way to f5.6. Finally, if we close more to f8, the Sigma lens started looking as good as the Canon lens. The Canon lens won the third round. It has just a slightly better image in close-ups. The final round is about diffraction. This phenomenon softens the image if we close the aperture too much. Here we are at f10 and it's hard to spot the differences. If we close the aperture more, the lenses are very similar. 
But if we stop now at f16 and look closely, the Canon lens handles diffraction better. Here is the Sigma lens at f16 and now the Canon lens. On top of that, the Sigma can only close its aperture at up to f16. The Canon goes all the way to f22, where we can also see fairly good results. In conclusion, the Sigma lens won the first and second round. It is sharper in the middle and in the corner of the image on both full frame and APS-C sensor cameras. The Canon lens won the third and fourth round. It is just a bit better in close-ups and it also handles diffraction better. We can say that this sharpness battle ended in a tie. The two lenses have very similar performances, but as we saw on APS-C sensor cameras, the Sigma lens is better. We also have to remember that we tested the first version of the Canon 35mm, a lens that was released in 1998 but with surprising results. I will make more videos like this one, I will test more lenses. If you want to see them, consider subscribing. Thank you.